Hello everybody. Welcome to the Ultimate Physics channel. In this video, I am going to solve some problems on uh, the Michelson Morley experiment under the topic of uh, special relativity. For those of you who haven't watched my lecture video on the same topic, that is the Michelson Morley experiment, I suggest that you please uh, watch uh, that lecture video before you uh, watch this one uh, that is solving problems on the Michelson Morley experiment. Okay, so let's proceed with the problem. First problem here is uh, two boats race against each other in perpendicular directions on a river as shown in the diagram. So here you can see that boat one and boat two uh, are schematically represented and uh, they're going to race on a river uh, in perpendicular directions. So there are points that are marked on the river bank, A, B, C. And then the boat one is going to race between A and B points and back. Uh, there is a distance L between these two points A and B. And uh, boat two is going to race between points A and C, uh, which also is again uh, separated by a distance of L. And the river flows with a current V here. You can see that from the diagram as well. So the boat speed for each oarsman is C in still water and the speed of the river current is small v. The oarsmen are of course equally matched that's mentioned in this question. Each boat has to travel a distance L and B back to the starting point to complete the race. Boat 1 races between points A and B and back whereas boat 2 races between points A and C and back. So that completes the race. If the boats reach the initial starting point A. Now the points A, B and C are marked on the river bank. Which of the two boats wins the race? You have to assume here of course that uh, C is much greater than V. Right? So in this problem what is C? C is the speed at which the boat uh, can move in the water uh, and that must be much greater than the river current itself v so in still water what is the speed of the boat that is given as small c here right now how do we solve this problem uh, the, the idea is of course uh, one can derive from the michelson morley experiment because this idea is used there in that experiment as well so there also we have discussed this idea uh, where the light beam travels in perpendicular directions uh, through different uh, path lengths Right. <clears throat> so here, what we uh, first do is we can solve, uh, uh, get the time, for example, of travel for these boats because uh, whichever boat travels takes a shorter time, that wins the race. So if we say for the boat one, if I write for boat one, Now, if it has to go between points A and B, let's write that to go between points A and B. That is in the diagram, all right? Uh, those two points. Uh, the Oarsman, the Oarsman. must uh, position, of course, his boat. How will position it? Must position his boat, that is the bow of the boat, the front of the boat, he has to position uh, it in a particular direction because there are two vectors involved here. So he has to position his bow uh, because he has to go across, right? So. He has to position his bow so that the boat moves between the points A and B because there is river current. So the boat moves between A and B exactly. That is the points A and B are lying like this in this diagram. 
and uh, if he goes straight obviously he will not reach this point because there is a river current v that is involved so if he tries to go like this he will rather end up here so in order to exactly go to this point b he has to position his boat in this particular direction in this direction and that would be his c vector and of course the v vector is like this so the resultant is he will be eventually able to reach from the point a to point b uh, so this is the vector that we are talking about so this is c squared minus v squared square root within the square root right now what about uh, the return journey because yes again uh, to cut it perpendicularly across the stream because again the velocity here is going to flow like this the river current now in this uh, point from b if he has to reach a he has to now position his boat in this direction and and then he would be eventually able to reach this point a of course again the vector v is pointing in this direction so you have c here uh, v here and again the return journey also uh, this is the square root of c squared minus v squared is his velocity <clears throat> so whichever boat boat one or boat two whichever boat makes the uh, round trip in the shortest time that is the winner right so that boat one can assume is going to win the race so uh, let us calculate the time for the first boat so time for boat one let us call the time as t1 so the time for first boat t1 is equal to the time that the boat takes to go from point a to b plus the time that it would take to go between points b and a that is the return journey so one is the forward journey the other one is the return journey both these uh, journeys are done uh, across the river current so here let us say that uh, if that is a case for the time here the distance between a and b is l over the velocity for this uh, particular uh, segment of the race is c squared minus v squared again the return journey also he has to travel the distance l and the same with the same velocity c squared minus v squared within square root right so if it travels like that then what is going to be the time in that case the time is going to be uh, t1 is equal to if i take the lc up here square root of c squared minus v squared i get uh, 2l on the numerator because l plus l is 2l here so if i take c squared out that is going to be 2l over c uh, within the square root i will have 1 minus v squared over c squared isn't it right now i can expand this thing uh, binomially to the first two terms so that uh, i get the uh, expression approximately that is uh, 2l over c 1 minus uh, v squared over c squared power minus 1 by 2 this is the actual expression now we have here and this can be binomially expanded as 2l over c 1 plus v squared over 2 c squared because of the binomial expression here there is a minor expansion here there is a minus one and here there is minus so here effectively here the so sign becomes plus and then of course there are uh, the additional terms which can be safely uh, neglected in this particular case right so effectively we can say that up to first two terms uh, t1 is equal to 2l uh, over c plus um, l v squared over 
c cube so i have multiplied inside the bracket the other term the outside term 2l over c the address is in this particular expression for t1 so similarly for uh, the port 2 i can calculate the time t2 between points a and c that is parallel to the flow of current in the river right because the river current is v and the boater uh, the, the oarsman races uh, the boat races from a to c and back c to a so for this uh, t2 is equal to uh, t of a to c of course plus t of c to a right and that is going to be equal to again the distance is l so there uh, we can say that l over when it goes this direction c is in this direction so with respect to the river bank the velocities are going to get added so it is c plus v plus l is going to be next time c minus v now because the boat is going to come back in the opposite direction so this is now we can take the common this thing so we have c squared minus v squared as the common factor here there is c plus v so we have l into c minus v plus for the next term it is l into c plus v right so that's what we will have <clears throat> again now we can continue with this multiplication lc minus lv so you will have lc minus lv plus lc my sorry plus again lv only so this is over c squared minus v squared and now here you can say that uh, these two terms are going to cancel and you have effectively uh, 2lc over c squared minus v squared in this i can take uh, the c squared out so i have 2lc c squared outside so 1 minus again i'm getting it in this form 1 minus v squared over c squared form and then i can cancel this uh, c on the numerator here with one of these uh, two c's here so i mean c squared there so i can cancel that so i have again 2l over c and this i take it to numerators so i have 1 minus v squared over c squared power minus 1 so again, if I try to expand it uh, binomially, I get the 2L over C, 1 plus uh, V squared over C squared, plus there are additional terms which are not very significant in this particular case. So we leave it out. So if I expand this further, I'm again going to get two terms, 2L uh, over C plus uh, 2L V squared over C cube. And of course, there are additional terms which we ignore here. So this is T2 for you. Now, uh, which, board, which one of these two quantities is uh, less because that Port which has taken lesser time wins the race right so we can find the difference in this case let us say the difference between the times t1 and t2 is del t so t2 minus t1 if i do which is the difference between these two things t1 and t2 we have calculated just now the first term i um, mean here is t2 is 2l over c plus 2l v squared over c cube and then t1 here we have found out uh, to be equal to 2l over c plus lv squared over c cube so here it is uh, minus right so minus 2l over c um, plus lv squared over 
C cubed, right? Right. So if I expand this 2L over C, 2L over C will cancel. So because of this minus sign there, and then these two terms, uh, this 2LV squared is LV squared, C cube is common. So my denominator is going to be C cube, 2LV squared, LV squared. So it is going to be LV squared. So this is the difference in time. And uh, since velocity is, is, is a positive entity, of course, C is also a positive entity. So therefore, you can say that del T is greater than zero. That is a conclusion we can arrive at. And that implies that originally T2 was greater than T1. So both two, which corresponds to the time T2 here, takes a longer time compared to both one. Since both two takes a longer time compared to both one, this obviously means that both one wins the race. So therefore, both one wins the race. So now what does it mean? This means that in the river bank, when two boats race against each other in perpendicular directions, in the river rather, when two boats uh, race against each other in perpendicular directions, the boat that goes across wins the race. See, the boat is going across the river current, the boat won, and still it is able to win the race. Whereas the boat that goes along the river direction, either downstream or upstream, it loses the race. So that is a conclusion in a round trip race. One can have that conclusion. So, <clears throat> right. Right, so that completes our uh, right first problem. Right, now let's, let's move to the next problem. The second problem here is verify that the Michelson Morley experiment places an upper limit on earth speed uh, relative to the ether of about five kilometers per second. So that is the upper limit placed by this experiment. We have discussed this point uh, in our uh, lecture video on the Michelson Morley experiment. So please do check out uh, the description here in this video for a link to that original lecture video that I had posted some time back, right? So using that uh, the point that I discussed in that lecture video, one can understand that if uh, there is a rotation of the arms of the uh, interferometer by 90 degrees, let me write it out. Uh, we know that from that video, of course, one can check that out if you have not already done so, our rotation of the arms of the interferometer, that is the Michelson interferometer, Michelson interferometer, Uh, by 90 degrees, which of course uh, Michelson and Morley did in their experiment, uh, the time difference quantity that we calculated in that uh, video, you can check that, that is the time difference. That is not actually time difference. It is the uh, difference uh, of time differences, so to say. So the time difference quantity, I call it uh, for the lack of a better name for that, that is uh, del t prime, which is itself a time difference, minus del t, because uh, this is the time difference between the parallel and the perpendicular arm. That is time difference for light travel between parallel and perpendicular arm for uh, after 90 degree rotation. 
and del t is the time difference for light travel between the parallel and the perpendicular arm before 90 degree rotation. So that is the time differences here and del t prime and del t. And we take a difference of the uh, two quantities. So this quantity I call a time difference quantity, let's say that we derived that expression has e being equal to 2L V squared over C cube. We also know that um, <clears throat> from that discussion that del T prime minus del T over the time period of the wave is the actual fringe shift, let us call that N. This is the fringe shift. Fringe shift. Right. Now in Michelson Morley experiment, they actually observed the fringe shift n to be equal to 0 0.01. So Michelson Morley observed n to be equal to 0 0.01. Now what is the time period of the wave there involved? If they had used, let us say, roughly a wave, light wave, which was sodium actually, 589 nanometers. So let me put it approximately as uh, 600 nanometers or uh, 6,000 angstrom. Let me take the wavelength to be. Then you have uh, T is equal to lambda over C. C is the velocity of light because in Michelson ex uh, model experiment, C refers to the speed of light. So here you have lambda has uh, 6,000 angstrom. So I say it is 6,000 into 10 power minus 10 meters, right? Over uh, three into 10 power eight meters per second. That's the speed of light roughly. Now here you get that for uh, two 10 power minus seven, this would be, if you do this, two into 10 power minus seven, that is three into 10 power 8 so it is 2 into 10 power uh, 7 minus 7 minus 8 so it is minus 15 so 10 power minus 15 seconds that is the time period t for the wave now the distance between the arm this l capital l for the michelson morley experiment was 11 meters so finally when they improved the experiment uh, they could achieve a distance of 11 meters. So to improve the accuracy, they had done that. Therefore, I can say that these two quantities in that uh, we know that we have written right here. We know that two quantities, these two. So I can compare these and use these values there uh, in this equation and try to get the speed because we want to find out the upper limit on Earth's speed relative to the ether of about 5 kilometers, right? We have to verify that here. So the speed here is that we are talking about is this small v. So I'm going to try to do that. So that is here mm, 2LV squared, of course, over C cubed. This is the quantity del T prime minus del T. That is over T. So here T would be equal to the fringe shift that is n. Now this can be again rewritten as 2L of V squared over C cube is equal to N T. And I need V squared. So V squared uh, is equal to this N T C cube. So I can write that as N T C cube goes there over 2L. And if I put the numbers, n is 0 0.01 uh, and uh, t we have calculated to be equal to 2 into 10 power minus 15 seconds. And then c cubed, that is uh, 3 into 10 power 8 whole cubed. And then you have 2 into 11. The l is here. 11 meters. So if I work it out, this is 10 power minus 2, this is 10 power minus 15, that is 10 power minus 17. So this is 2, this is 3 cubed is 27, 
and this is 24 so we can say that 10 power minus 2 into 2 into 10 power minus 15 into 27 into 10 power 24 over 22 sorry about that right so quickly if i can solve this this is uh, 54 right this is 27 rather right so 27 so that is 3 cube so that is 54 into 10 power minus 17 10 power 24 that is going to be 10 power plus 7 by 22 this is v squared that is going to be Uh, 54 by 22 into 10 power 7 that is going to be if I do the calculation I get 2.46 roughly this one into 10 power 7 or I can say that roughly that is uh, 24.6 into 10 power 6 that's v squared so v must be Roughly, this is going to be 25, so I can say that roughly that is 5 into 10 power 3 meters per second. So I can clearly say that the upper limit is not more than 5 because this is less than 25, so obviously that is 5 meters per second, uh, 5 into 10 power 3 meters per second, or I can say that it is 5 kilometers per second. That is the upper limit on the speed of Earth relative to ether as per the uh, fringe shift obtained by Michelson and Morley in their 1887 experiment. So that has been verified here. Right, so let's go to the, <clears throat> the next problem. Right, so the third problem, uh, Back in the 1930s, pilots used to race small airplanes around courses marked by a pylon on the ground at each end of the courses. Two such equally matched pilots race, among, uh, race along perpendicular courses of length 25 miles at speeds of 130 miles per hour. A steady wind of speed 20 miles per hour blows parallel to one of the courses now, there are two parts here in this question which pilot wins the race and by how much and the second part is relative to the axis of their respective courses what headings must the two pilots use so here what is this heading basically this is the directions they're talking about what directions would pilot set in their flight their airplane so headings are basically the direction uh, markers right right the direction indicators so that's what we mean by the headings here right so <coughs> sorry so this problem is very similar to the problem that we discussed already uh, uh, that as the first problem in this uh, video that is uh, two boats race across uh, perpendicular courses and which one wins the race we found that uh, the race, uh, the boat that races uh, perpendicular to the river current wins the race. Now that was uh, on water here. Yeah, this is in the air. That is the airplanes are traveling in the air. So there is a wind speed also, something like the river current in that original problem that is 20 miles per hour. So one can understand that uh, this is probably going to result in a similar result here. Uh, to the one that we had for the boat problem uh, so let's proceed to that so let me say that there are two pilots here uh, they are right we need directions also so let us take into account that as well let me mark the north direction here obviously therefore the right side is uh, the east direction and that means uh, let us say the two pilots are going along courses uh, perpendicular to each other let's say that pilot uh, uh, a let me call the first pilot as pilot A and let us say he is pointing his flight uh, in this particular direction, this, uh, the airplane in this particular direction. 
and therefore there has got to be a perpendicular course of the other pilot so that is roughly perpendicular right right so that is uh, pilot b uh, call this as pilot b he is tracing perpendicular perpendicular course and the length of these courses are given as uh, 25 miles so 25 miles in each case they race along courses that are marked by pylon on the ground so on the ground you keep markers uh, to know where you are exactly traveling and how far you have flown and the speed here in this case the wind speed is uh, 20 uh, miles per hour so let me call that wind speed as v which is equal to 20 miles per hour that is one of the pilots is flying uh, along the direction of the wind initially and again coming back to the original point starting point whereas pilot b has to cut across the wind uh, in this direction so pilot b goes like this perpendicular to the wind direction in this so that is what is happening in that case right So we have to just calculate the time just like how we calculated uh, the time in the first problem here also we have to calculate the times for the two airplanes so let me calculate the time for the first pilot a okay so the time for the pilot a let me call that as ta that is equal to uh, right so that is equal to uh, let us say L over pilot A is parallel, right? So it is L over C plus V and L over C minus V from our earlier uh, this thing. So L over C plus V plus L over C minus V. This is the total time. And in this case, L is 25. So 25 over C is given as 130 miles per hour in the problem. So it is 130 plus the wind speed V is given as 20. So everything is in miles per hour. For the return journey, uh, it is again 25 uh, miles he's traveling and uh, he is now against the wind. So it is uh, this, uh, 130 minus 20. So that is going to be 25 over uh, 150 plus 25 over 110. And one can simplify that as uh, five, five times this is 30 right 5 over 30 plus 5 over 22 right so if we can further simplify this down uh, we will get about uh, point three nine Three nine, let's say hours because miles per hour per unit square. So this is what we would get. Right now, if we calculate for the next uh, this thing TB, right? So if you calculate that, the second pilot that is TB is equal to uh, here it is uh, across the window. So you have L over square root of c squared minus v squared plus l over square root of c squared minus v squared which is nothing but 2l over square root of uh, c squared minus v squared which is equal to uh, 2 into l so, so that is 2 into 25 over square root of uh, 130 squared minus 20 squared that is uh, 50 over that is 50 over mm, this is a squared minus b squared stuff so it's square root of uh, a plus b that's 150 in and a minus b that is 110 right so this is going to be mm, 
I have a hundred here. I have uh, square root out, so that would come out as ten, and uh, this would cancel. So I will say five on the numerator and square root of uh, fifteen into eleven. So that is five over square root of one sixty-five. This would turn out to be a uh, point three. eight nine what hours right so that is the duration for the pilot who is going across so he takes less time obviously we can see that here now because the original one was here 0.3939 for the pilot who travels parallel to the wind direction whereas here the pilot that travels uh, perpendicular to the wind direction travels uh, and takes a less time isn't it so now we say again that the pilot uh, travels uh, ta rather takes more time than tb i mean ta is more than tb that is pilot a has is taken less more time rather so pilot a uh, going parallel to the wind direction takes more time therefore pilot B this would mean pilot B uh, going across the direction of the wind it is going perpendicular to the direction of the wind wins the race that is the conclusion we can give here by how much that's the question right so the difference between the two times if you do that is a uh, t a minus tb that would be 0 0.39 39 let me say 0 0.394 minus uh, point three eight nine and that is roughly zero point zero zero five let me say roughly and that would turn out this is in hours right so that would be somewhat like about 17 seconds roughly so the difference in times between the two uh, pilots the two airplanes is 17.3 seconds now what about uh, the directions because the second part of this question asks about uh, headings right what headings must the two pilots use for that <clears throat> there is nothing just uh, um, the aircraft or uh, even a ship for the example a ship or a vessel on the uh, ocean in the ocean uh, what is the compass direction that is what we mean by heading right so for pilot a heading must be pointing towards east direction uh, for the initial part of the journey and for the return west direction so I write east and west directions generally right because he is going along the wind direction and against it later so parallel to the wind direction generally so for pilot B he is going cutting across the wind right wind direction is like this he must go like this so he has to point the nose of his uh, airplane uh, in this direction for the onward journey if this is north this is going to be northwest so the he heading is northwest for the first segment of the journey and then for uh, the return journey uh, it would point in this direction because he has to reach from here to here 
so wind is flowing in this direction so he has to put it like this that means it is a south west so the headings for pilot b are northwest direction and south wind direction for pilot a it is east and west directions so these are the headings for the <coughs> pilot right let's move quickly to the next problem uh, that is uh, problem number four right Michelson used a path length of uh, L is equal to 27.4 kilometers in a series of measurements of speed of light. This is not the 1887 experiment. And this is uh, uh, another experiment that he performed to measure the speed of light. So their L value is 27.4 kilometers. How much time would, it, uh, would light take? There is a small uh, typo error there. That is T-A-K-E here, right? To complete the around trip distance of 2L, that is back and forth, how much is the total time? That is the question. What is the classical correction in seconds in the expression of time taken by light along the parallel arm of the interferometer, assuming Earth's speed is V is equal to 10 power minus 4 times the speed of light C. That is the light speed. Right, so we have uh, derived the expressions already in our original lecture video. So one can refer to that if you have not checked it out already please again i suggest that you do so now l is equal to 27.4 kilometers here this problem <clears throat> uh, what is the time initially we can calculate that is the first part uh, of this is uh, mm, yeah, what, how much time would take, uh, would it light take to complete a round trip distance of 2L? So distance is 2L, so time is equal to distance over velocity, so 2L over C. And that is going to be 2 into 27.4 over 3 into 10 power 8 meters per second. So here it is 27.4 kilometers, so I put a 10 power 3 here to convert it to meters so how much i get now that is 54.8 by 3 and that is 10 power uh, minus 5 this is 54 by 3 is 18.3 into 10 power minus 5 now of course i can write as 1.83 into 10 power minus 4 second this is the time light would take to go a distance of 27.4 kilometers and be back this is the first part of this question so let me call that as i mean a maybe now what is the second part they're asking what is a classical correction in terms of uh, in seconds uh, in the expression of time taken for time taken by light along the parallel arm so we have derived this uh, in our uh, original derivation that is uh, we know that along the parallel arm of length L time taken is T let us call that as L over C plus V plus L over C minus V because this is against the uh, ether, assumably, right? So, flow of ether, right? So, we have L over C plus V plus L over C minus V, and that is equal to we have simplified it already. So, we know that it is 2LC over C squared minus V squared. So, we have derived it many times so far so so we know that this further simplifies after the binomial expansion to uh, 2 l over c 
1 plus uh, v squared over c squared. Of course, there are higher terms which we don't. Now, here we are asked about the correction term in seconds, right? That's the question. So, that term is 2L plus C is the actual uh, time. And uh, the question, if you see, classical correction in seconds to time, expression for time. So, we have the expression for time here. Now, we need a correction term alone. So, that I would say is uh, this particular term. So, if you product, take the product of these two terms, that is the classical correction. So, the correction term I write directly. Of course, classical correction, right? This is classical correction because we haven't used any relativistic idea in this, right? So, classical correction term to the time expression t is equal to 2lv squared. I multiply that over c cube. This is the correction term. Now, if you plug in the numbers, that is 2 into 27.4 into 10 power 3, because it is in kilometers, then you multiply that with uh, V. V is given as 10 power minus 4C. The question it is given as 10 power minus 4C. So I say 10 power minus 8C squared, because here it is V squared over C cube. So we can say C cube first. So if I can cancel the C squared out, this will go off. It becomes C now. So if I simplify this further, uh, this is 3 into 10 power 8, right? So 3 into 10 power 8. So I have 54.8 multiplied by 10 power minus 5 on the numerator. And on the denominator, I have 3 into 10 power 8. So the time now is t is equal to, <clears throat> this is going to be again 18.3, is it it? Roughly 18.3. So I say that it is uh, 18.3 multiplied by 10 power minus 13 seconds, is it it? That is equal to 1.83 into 10 power minus 12 seconds. So that is the correction term in seconds to the time expression. So we have done that. Right, let's move on to the next problem. Right, this is the fifth one, right? <clears throat> 